Some other news has come out about this. This is an article that was put out yesterday. Bungie layoffs include senior executives Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy. Luke Smith, I mean, he's like, he's he's been on camera multiple times. Executive creator, it says here, creative director, Destiny Bungie. You know, he said some controversial things. He's done some controversial things. He was, he was um, the main person who delivered sunsetting to us, or the main person at least delivered the news of sunsetting and the DCV. Whether or not it was just him pushing for that, who knows? But he was the Destiny 2 director, I, I want to assume at that time. But he also is responsible for expansions like the Taken King. You know what I'm saying? So is there is there good, there's bad? Sure. I think what, what Luke Smith represented for a lot of people was like he brought some level of excitement because you were like, all right, what they cooking, man? Because like this, this was, you know, creative lead, creative director, you knew whatever Luke and his team was cooking should should it's, it was going to be new. We don't know if we were going to like new, but we knew it was going to be new. Mark knows where they also I mean, I want to say him and Luke pretty much work side by side. But it says right here, the VP of Destiny, the vice president of Destiny. Here's the thing. It says that originally when the news came out, it said that these two guys have been let go. But more news followed afterwards, which actually stated that they just left and we'll get into that in just a moment we can probably just go watch the the podcast directly that way because here's then we're playing a kind of this game of telephone and the game of telephone is like you know everyone listening to the podcast or listening to someone and then you know they they misconstrue things maybe not even purposely just accidentally right so i think we just we should just go probably watch it but for those wondering is this true is luke and mark actually gone this is tokom Tokom is the guy who was on Sandbox for years. I think it says right here he's now uh, on Marathon. And, okay, yeah, previously was the combat design lead. This was the guy that, you know, made things like Icarus Dash and Top Tree Domblade whenever it came out and a number of other things. He, again, kind of had some controversial takes. This was also the guy that said, you know, Twilight Garrison would never come back in the game and everybody was like boo this man right but he says right here luke and mark were instrumental in every banger release we've ever had that dynamic duo moved mountains for the game for many of us luke was a friend and a mentor who championed the game and hobby luke always wanted to make sure we honor the time folks spent in our world yeah as far as i i remember luke and mark were pretty much always together you kind of got that you got that as he said that dynamic duo when they when they entered the room uh they were normally both together and they were they were jointly attacking things together however at least to my knowledge they were moved to a project called payback which was supposed to be set in the destiny universe i don't know what the scope of payback was supposed to be but it was said that luke and mark were working on payback I think everybody's overplaying this. They could just be progressing their careers elsewhere elsewhere amidst what is clearly changed at Bungie. Robbie, no. Okay, let's tell you this, Robbie. When Joe left, I was like, okay, maybe Joe got a position back and he's going back to Riot. But then Andy left, which was really concerning. And then Kat left. Extremely concerning. Kat was literally, there wasn't a piece of the final shape that she didn't know and understand. A lot of our conversations at Bungie took place with Kat. And to see her leave, and we're, you're talking key people, okay? And then you have the number of layoffs. And now, I mean, look, sometimes the writing is just on the wall. And I'm not saying that Bungie's going down the drain. That's not what I'm saying. And I have, I have my theories. I have my theories to what's going on. Personally, I think that with Bungie closing all these incubation projects, which Luke and Mark were, were definitely on, you were probably given an option. Your option was probably, hey, go back to being or going back to working on Destiny or that's that. You see what I mean? Or Marathon. Those, I think those became your only three options. Hey, you're either going to work on Marathon, Destiny, or it's time for you to go. The future of Destiny is dependent on Marathon. I don't, I don't think so. Okay, depending on what way. Because if you think that if Marathon ends up being a, an explosive success, everybody say goodbye to Destiny. This is not me hoping for the downfall of Marathon. I'm not hoping for that either. But we'll just see what plays out. Let's go listen to this podcast though, guys. I think I think we got we need to hear from the horse's mouth, okay? By the way, guys, this is Jeff Grubb right here. He's even got it right here. Jeff Grubb, Game Mess. If you guys want to go check this out, let's let's listen to this. Uh, let's recap. Uh, there was uh, another round of Bungie layoffs. 17% um, of the studio. This is after the round of layoffs in October. You know, not even a year ago. Um, 
This is something that's been in the works, even though uh, uh, the final shape came out and, and performed well critically. It did about the same in terms of player numbers as uh, the Lightfall, but it took four more months than Lightfall. So it cost a lot more money to make. And um, to spend that much more money and see the exact same return, clearly it broke. And really it was breaking even before that. There was kind of no numbers they could do with uh, the final shape to uh, avoid this scenario, it seemed like. Um, so a lot of people laid off. Um, 220 people cut from the company. Another 150 are leaving Bungie and joining SIE. They are being like shifted around. Um, and uh, speaking of shifting around, Bungie going forward, starting now, uh, the process is beginning to uh, basically remove their autonomy. They will no longer operate as an independent studio under Sony. They will be like any other PlayStation worldwide studio under Sony Interactive Enter Entertainment with Herman Holst overseeing the studio like he does the rest of Sony Studio. That's fucking wild. I mean, that, that is that like truly confirmed right there? That like Herman Holst, like we're, we're talking like what Santa Monica and, and those studios just operating d just directly like you've been absorbed. They made bangers though. God, that's the one thing, man. That's the one thing that we all are sitting here going like, is this okay? Because we know those studios that Sony has their hands in do in fact make bangers. And so I think everyone is sitting here wondering, hey, could could Bungie become Santa Monica? You know, could it actually turn it around, get the management that it needs? So let's just keep watching. Those are the basics. There's some other stuff uh, involving, hey, what's going on with these games? Uh, what's going on with some of the, the key leadership? Uh, Pete Parsons, for example, what's going on with him? He's still there. Uh, and many people aren't happy. Oh, yeah. Let me just confirm that, by the way. We're not getting a fucking D3. We've been saying it literally now for years. But it has been confirmed that D3 was never being worked on. Okay, so say if D3 has never been worked on and say they, they go, okay, we got to start development right now. You might want to take a wild guess how many fucking years that's going to take. Think, just wrap your head around this. Let's get the logistics right. You're telling me a studio of 850 is going to maintain live development of Destiny 2. They're going to push out Marathon next year. And they're going to fucking start making D3 right now? What are we smoking, fellas? Ha! Oh, by the way, Marathon's going to be a live game. And you're gonna they're going to continue to update it just like Destiny. It's still going to get live updates just like Destiny. There's no fucking way happy with that there's been a an outcry from many developers many of the people that formerly worked there people caught up in the round of layoffs last time saying hey pete you should step down uh that's not happened yet and uh and pe people keep, get, keep asking for it although it does seem like this situation was due to his architecting he was making bigger promises to sony it seemed like than he could keep then he could have the studio keep to get more money from the acquisition. And now those chickens have come home to roost. And here we are. I mean, don't forget, Jeff, PlayStation bought, or Sony rather, bought Bungie for billions of dollars, right? Yes, billions. They were not paying for just Destiny 2. No. Uh, you know, some of that was obviously Marathon, but there were a lot of things promised. And some of that was this idea that they were going to help out and manage maybe all of Sony's live service games. Um, you know, in that letter, he uh, Parsons talks about, oh, we, you know, had this strategy, like we had so many things starting up, we had so many things cooking, basically, and it sounds just kind of absolutely wild. And sure, some of it is just bad timing, right? Uh, that a lot of this kind of uh, was in the middle of development when we're in this big downturn, but that it, that's why it was always a big risk. Downturns can happen. So why were we just growing the studio at this exponential rate especially when I let me let me also just say the, the downturn right and i'm not saying that like yeah obviously there, there are downturns especially in certain industries more than others but i i think the projections for covid were unrealistic you know everyone all these all these studios publishers and everyone had these metrics with that, that were off off the charts of playtime absolutely insane but dude that's gonna happen because everyone was at fucking home and i'm gonna you know honestly i'm glad we're not stuck at home anymore but i think that for gaming had COVID, covid kept us locked down for like years probably would have been pretty good and maybe that was a bet people made maybe that was a bet sony was was making maybe that was a bet that uh bungie was making because the longer the lockdown went on the, the the more likelihood people would be 
of course, playing video games at their home while while working remotely. Time when like, you know, that, yeah, Destiny 2 was doing good, but there were always had to be some concerns or some metrics to show, well, we can't keep this up forever. Of course, Destiny has always had something of a new player problem when it's not just we're launching a new number game and they said for a long time that a destiny 3 wasn't going to happen anytime soon and apparently a destiny 3 isn't even really in the works there was something else but the, the, the fact that they had all these other plates spinning and one of them hasn't been a destiny 3 which is the one thing that seems like it really would bring in a lot of new players i have no idea what the strategy was it seems bad and it seems like other people are paying for it not parsons yes okay that is a great point to bring up out of all the plates that were spinning that he just said of all the games that were in incubation and being worked on why weren't any of them at a destiny 3 because if this had started in 20 so think about it 2020 you got code name matter being you know worked on which got canned actually within that year into that year because we everyone speculated that maybe d3 was being worked on in the background but why not any work on d3 throughout this time frame no preliminary work and i'm not saying that i want a d3 over a d2 but let's be real eyeball wise you would get a lot more people interested in a sequel than an expansion it just happens that way man you know we saw the numbers there for d2 the problem with d2 vanilla kind of like lightfall is you couldn't capitalize on the amount of new people that it brought into the game it brought in a ton of new people and then they all dropped it not because oh destiny is just not their kind of game no it was because vanilla was ass it was terrible i mean everybody quit even veteran players quit and then lightfall fell flat narratively and then and then that led to a lot of negative sentiment and tons of people just checked out what a d3 would give is hey why don't, why don't you give this game another chance we've learned from previous mistakes and previous successes here we are with d3 could be another launch like d2 but that's a great point that he brought up is that out of all the plates that were spinning why weren't why wasn't a single one of them d3 yes uh we could talk about what the strategy is going to be let's 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 do that a little bit um I guess in order to do that, you kind of need to know what it was going to be. Maybe they were working on this thing that you alluded to, this uh, this other project called Payback that was being overseen by Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy. Um, they were like basically like VP of production, Mark Noseworthy, and then uh, executive creative director. But both of them, they were labeled as working on Payback, this new thing that was going to be the new Destiny experience, the next big thing for Destiny, but specifically not destiny 3 now i'll be i'll be clear that i don't know what makes it not destiny 3 uh that stuff is very sensitive for some reason i don't know what do y'all think it was what do y'all think if, if payback was a game that existed in destiny in the destiny universe but not destiny 3 what the hell would it have been no oh that hurts some of you saying it could have been a d1 reboot get the fuck out of here there's no way. I don't think Destiny is old enough to have a Destiny classic yet. Could have been a gotcha game. A Destiny gotcha. Probably sell that Genshin money. No, what makes it not Destiny 3, but Luke Smith is not going to go work on something that's just nothing. He's working right. on the next big Destiny thing. Now, Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy are no longer at Bungie. They were let go. <coughs> they were caught up in these, the, um, let's see what, how did uh, Pete Parsons put it? It was the um, executive, yeah, the executive and senior leadership shakeup that was mentioned in the blog post. Those are some of the executives and leadership that he was talking about. They, they are no longer are at Bungie. Payback is on the shelf. And the strategy now is let's take Destiny 2 and we're going to make smaller experience packs, smaller tinier little things that are six months instead of the annual expansion packs they've done before. There'll be two smaller experience packs going forward. And the whole idea is, and it, it, like your like ears are ringing when you hear that, like that doesn't sound great. The idea is let's spend less to make less so that we can have a Destiny 2 that costs less. And then maybe it'll make enough money to make more sense going forward. In the meantime, we keep working on Marathon and and frontiers is like that the, the name the name for like the current strategy of like shifting to the this two a year ex experience pack thing they're going to do frontiers and they're going to do marathon and then if both of those things hit if both of those things work out they will then revisit what the future of destiny will be at that point so the future of destiny is basically on hold it is destiny 2 for now definitely no destiny 3 there was never a destiny 3 in the works some new destiny experience was that was called payback 
that is on the shelf that is not happening um i'm really curious where, where jeff is getting like i'm not i i, I know jeff is crap uh, credible is he pulling the information from liz on that because we literally saw some leaked information yesterday that does in fact align with what jeff is saying that there will be too many expansions every year they actually too many expansions in two seasons each lasting six months long if this is true guys then bungie and sony they must have complete belief that marathon is going to be the greatest thing ever shipped they're essentially saying Destiny is, is we're going to hold off on any major future developments of Destiny because all roads lead to Marathon. It's not that I don't believe Marathon is going to be a good game. I think Marathon is probably going to be solid, but more revenue than Destiny. You know, I, I believe Marathon may actually be a hit, but a bigger hit than Destiny, a genre defining game. I mean, is, is, is it really going to be that? Dude, and I know I bring up RuneScape for all of this, but this is just so reminiscent of when Jagex was convinced that RuneScape needed to become this modern MMORPG. And the higher ups at Jagex all came in and said, no, we got to have evolution of combat. It needs to happen. And everybody was like, dude, we don't like this. The players were like, we don't like this. So much so that they put out a poll and the poll got messed with. I don't know if they turned the bots on or something, but the votes got skewed. And next thing we know, we're playing Evolution of Combat RuneScape, which changed the game in every single way. And everybody quit. Even I quit. I was a dedicated player. I quit. And it got so bad that finally Jagex was like, holy shit, we're going to die. This stuff is about, this. everything's about to close down. What do we do? And someone somewhere, some, I don't know who it was. This person should be running Jagex. Said, you know what? What if we just listen to the community and give them back old school runescape you know the thing we took away and oh my god blew up and it has continued to be what in the top five mrpgs what a wild concept I i'm seeing parallels here with bunch let's just continue it sounds like they have a very narrow path to walk and they're doing it without some of the people that made it possible in the first place but they still got pete parsons so yay luke smith's gone yes man uh Okay, so that's wild. Um, I, I, so much of this is just shocking up. Real, real quick, so people are going to like, this This comes from the same source that told me about the layoffs before they were announced. So that's how I'm certain about this. Right. So. And, you know. Okay. And it's so odd because Luke, what was, where's, where's, the, where's the YouTube video of Luke Smith? Literally, what was it? Three, two, two and a half months ago where Luke Smith gets in front of the camera and says, we have much to talk. This is not the end of Destiny 2. We have much to talk about. This, this was just three months ago. Hey everyone, this is Luke from the Destiny team. The final shape is the culmination of a 10 year journey. A journey that began on the Cosmodrome, took you to the moon, Venus, Mars, the reef, and beyond. It's a journey that'll end inside the Traveler with you facing the Witness. But facing the Witness is not the end of Destiny 2, and it's definitely not the end of Destiny. After you face the Witness, we're gonna tell you what's coming next to Destiny 2 and beyond. We'll see you soon. Anyways. I don't know if it was a lie. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe at that time, everything was still good. You know what I mean? But yes, that, that definitely aged poorly. I've seen some maybe different ideas out there about when payback was put on the shelf. I don't know if you like have anything about the timeline of that. Yeah, when so it, this it, project it, was abandoned. It was developed, for, it, it was in development for a little bit over a year. And then it was canceled in mid-June. Um, there was another project that was a spinoff called... I want to say sunspot or something like that sunspot i believe hold up hold up payback was only in development for a year from june so right after lightfall my best case scenario is started it started in lightfall all right let's continue another project that was a spinoff called i want to say sunspot or something like that sunspot i believe and that was something different that was uh canceled back in like 2023 or something like that that was something different so that hasn't been a going concern for a while this one though was the active big thing like again luke smith's not going to go work on some bullshit he was going to work on the next thing for destiny and yeah uh, that look for people saying sunspot sounds like bs um there there is a long history of things that Bungie started to do and then didn't go through with it Ma matter was another one right that got canned and that one got canned no one even knew about it, it got canned back in 2020 right after it was like 
tease, right? Like not long after it was tease. And that's clearly how they were positioning this, whether that was, whether it was Destiny 3, it wasn't, but whether it was or not, it was the next big thing for Destiny. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we could speculate what that means. I have no idea. I'm not, I don't wanna go guessing over there. Um, gosh, it's just, it seems like they're gonna have such a hard time getting Destiny fans who are obviously feeling like crap right now and who now know that the game is not going to get the level of investment that it once did, I mean, how are you possibly going to get them excited about having less? Um, like, I, I guess you have to make the quality of it really good, but you don't have as many people there to work on it. You don't have a lot of the same people. I just have a hard time believing that Destiny 2 has some bright future ahead of it, and there's no Destiny 3 or anything else coming to kind of save the day there. It, it feels like... The strategy is kind of hold on until Marathon and hope that's a major hit. And it's uh, that's what I've also heard is that expectations for Marathon that is supposed to come out next year are sky high. They are sky high for Marathon. Uh, it really does have to hit. Now, you know, for Destiny, it's uh, th these experience packs, again, different than expansion packs, smaller to a year. They will... Let me just say about Marathon. I think the game's going to do some good numbers. <sighs> I just don't know if it's going to be good enough to justify killing off Destiny. I don't think that will ever be, a, uh, you know, unless it, we're, we're t the only way I, I've, and I'm talking about from a business perspective, obviously from a love perspective, Destiny first all day long. Okay. The only way it would make sense that Marathon should overshadow Destiny and development cycle would be if Marathon is literally as explosive to the gaming world as Fortnite was back in 20, well, 2017. But y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Like Fortnite was, like, don't get me wrong, PUBG was crazy, but Fortnite hit and it just, it changed everything. It changed everything. It's the reason why you probably got sick of it, but why so many games became Battle Royales. And we had literally Battle Royale after Battle Royale because of Fortnite's success. And PUBG definitely was a big part of that. But Fortnite exploded everything. The only way Marathon would make sense to, to sap up all the development here from Bungie is if it has that level of Fortnite success. We'll have, you know, there will be content, there will be cutscenes, stuff like that. But the, um, I guess, uh, do fans call it like tutorial campaigns or something like that? The the, 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 tutor the tutorial experience that like introduces you in there that feels like this big single player thing. Right, there's always kind of a single player campaign. Well, that, don't, yeah, no, yeah, story missions. Not anymore, yeah. not anymore. The quote unquote, yeah, quote unquote, a new light is uh, that campaign they call it. Right, you... so they're not gonna be that. For the play people too, yeah. That likely won't be a part of the experience packs going forward, uh, but there will still be raids, I guess. Yeah, they Although, gotta have raids. They gotta have raids. They'll, they'll, they will... So no, no narrative is what I'm getting from this. We're going to get dungeons, raids. We're going to get content to play, activities to play, but no story. I don't really know how you could do that. Chad, how much of the narrative team got laid off? I know quite a few did, but I mean, where's the old girl that sounds like Phil's safe? If she's, if she's still there, I got hope. I got hope. Well, we're getting, or if, for people that don't believe anything that's being said right now, first, Jeff, Jeff has his people he's talking to. Okay. Second, if you don't believe this, Jason Schreier is another one who is going to be coming out with an article today. And y'all let me know as soon as that article is out. Should be confirming more of these details. We'll still have raids. Um, so yeah, th I mean, yeah, th there is a lot riding on uh, being able to sort of get over this hump with Destiny, get people to feel fine about the new state of that game. And then really a lot is riding on Marathon. And uh, of course they can try to reset things at that point, but that is... Uh, that's a difficult path to, to walk. Well, can I ask why? I don't know if you know this. Why are they so confident in Marathon? I mean, it's a new project. I I guess that alone is exciting. Um, I, I'm out of the extraction shooter loop. It's never really been my thing, but I don't know of any big successes in that genre outside of Tarkov. I'm sure there's a couple more. Um, is it, like, what is it about Marathon that is going to be so mind-shattering? I mean, you know, just the fact that it is Bungie's, like, other new things since destiny and before that that was halo so they don't do new things too often i guess but still um like if this thing comes out and now isn't a hit oh no yeah it's um it's it, it is a bad position for them to be in and it is uh and again they are here because of the this like the setup the foundation that that pete parson built, built was with sony when the deal was going through it is you need to be able to do this and this and this, and you need to deliver on all this stuff. And of course, there's the stuff with um, the mobile game, the mobile MOBA, uh, the, the other game that is getting spun off onto its own team uh, going forward. Uh, 
yeah i'm sure that is something else as well but um yeah there there's just not a lot of room for air here everything has to work out as good as possible and we just know from the beginning of the, the story of destiny is live service games are messy and you figure them out you build the plane once you're in the air and and you lay the track in front of you when you're on the train and all those metaphors they are gonna have to still do that because that's how these games work and so they are the, the likelihood of this working out in and in things kind of being the way people want for a, a bungee in the future seems very slim um which is just if, if honestly it just feels like the story's not over for bad news with bungee destiny always had sort of an interesting problem where it's it's whole kind of game because like hey we're an mmo but it's very high end it looks as fancy as like whatever you imagine the newest halo looking and it's just hard to make that on the cheap, right? That's always sort of the problem. Like, you can have big returns with Destiny, but you have to have big investment in it at all times. You know, you look at a World of Warcraft, right? And, you know, you, you you can see how you can dump a lot of money in that game, and it makes a ton of money back, of course, but it's just not as hard to make a cutscene in a World of Warcraft or even a Final Fantasy XIV compared to a Destiny. Uh, so, again, I just don't know what that looks like when it's smaller, I just don't understand how anybody at Buzz, uh, Bungie is feeling good right now, and I the the fans obviously aren't feeling good. I don't know what the turnaround here is. Now, granted, we've been in these situations before. With people, uh, you know, there's a point where we wrote off all of Blizzard, yep. but nobody would ever feel good about that whole studio, uh, that whole place again. Not Cross this is three days in a row beating a dead horse. Alpha, here, here, here's the thing, man. You are a a loyal pay to win subscriber here, Luke. King Smith and Mark Noseworthy are no longer with Bungie. Okay. Now look, look, look. I don't I've never worked with Luke or Mark, at least not directly, not like through Bungie, not like as a developer. They could be the greatest people to work with. They could be the worst people to work with. They could have the greatest ideas or the sh the, or the shittiest ideas. I don't know. But th this could be, you know, potentially, at least from what the community was led to believe for years, this is like Tom Brady and Gronk leaving the New England Patriots, okay? Yes, everybody said Gronk was washed. Everybody said Tom couldn't do it. He couldn't do it anywhere else but with the Patriots. And then they go win another one. And they go win another one. You see what I'm saying? Now, here's the thing. I don't know if we should say either Luke or Mark Noseworthy is Tom Brady level. All right. Or even Gronk level. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I've never worked with the guys. That's a question that only developers can answer. Really? I, I, you know where I'm coming from? I, I, I don't know. I think I think the question that I would want to, to know more than anything is how does the current people still at Bungie feel about the leadership changes? How do they feel? Maybe they can't even say. I don't even know. It has mostly turned around now so uh you know it, it sucks like oh, to turn around when there's so many people who work there that are the victims of this the people that really do make up bungee i'm just worried about the tools that they have and the ability that they have to uh to deliver here again marathon sounds like the one thing that should just come out as we always expected it to so whatever the vision there was we should see it and it seems like they have faith in that so Maybe Marathon will come out, really save the day, bring in a lot of money. That money can be invested into a Destiny 3 or whatever. I don't see it happening, man. And I'm not I'm not saying I don't see Marathon being a success. I don't see Bungie going, hey, Marathon, thank you for all this cash. Let's make a D3 now. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see it happening. And that's if it makes some water cash. But this is all still pretty shocking and pretty distressing. Yeah. Um... And, and you know internally when they're when they're like looking around and say hey how are things going it seemed like most people at bungie weren't quite aware of just how bad things were and then and then people that knew knew that like hey all those promises that we did make to sony that we said all the milestones we said we would hit basically every single one missed they missed on everything across the board so I, I don't know how you blame anyone but Pete Parsons, the architect of that deal. So, uh, yeah, and and he got his, he got paid, he got you know likely hundreds sure. of millions of dollars. I don't, I don't know. He got lots of, enough <laughs> Maybe money built off of false promises. Apparently. Yep, and en enough money to be able to afford a fleet of classic cars that everyone keeps pointing to, and yeah, criticize him for that. That seems completely fair to me. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it feels like the ten years of Destiny happened. And uh, I think a lot of fans are going to look at this moment and look, be like, this is a dead game now. They're going to move on. 
And I don't, I kind of don't blame them. What do you, what do you, what do you tell fans like that? Like, Hey, yeah, just stick, stick with it. Maybe on the other side of this things bounce back. I, I'm not going to be the one to tell them that. Yeah. I guess like the one thing that's sort of missing is, you know, when, when everybody was mad at world of Warcraft, there was a final fantasy 14 there. There, there are some things that are like destiny too. There are a lot of things that are exactly like it. There's Warframe. Maybe people can go over to that. And that's a game that seems to be getting, you know, still a pretty good amount of investment. Things like Tenocon happen. At least as an outsider, it seems like people are happy with that. But still, it's it's different from Destiny 2. It's not exactly the same thing. And there are people who just really, really like Destiny, and it might be hard for them Oh, yeah, to go. of course. But yes. it's still the problem. I mean, you know, and I we talked about this forever, right? Because I, I love Destiny 2. When it came out, it's just the point where once I'm done, it's hard to get back in. And I think we saw that. You know, that's the weird thing, too, with the final shape, with how good everybody said it was and how happy it did make those hardcore Destiny 2 fans it just seemed like it didn't really get people to come back. And at a certain point, nothing can make them come back except for that Destiny 3, which is something that just, you know, isn't happening. And for a while, they specifically said, we're not, no, it's Destiny 2 now and forever. Like, why wouldn't it be? And, you know, there are some obvious reasons why it wouldn't be, because eventually you kind of uh, build up that wall and it kind of becomes obtuse and becomes difficult for people to to break through. Yeah, I mean, and and like if I'm someone who's on the outside as I am right now, like like most people, like you, uh, someone I, you know, I spent some time with Destiny Two, enjoyed my, myself. Uh, definitely, I you know, Christian is a huge Destiny Two fan. We talks about it a lot, and I'm always like, I will wait for what feels like the right onboarding moment, and now it feels like that's clearly not really going to be coming anytime soon. So, um, yeah, it is in a rough position. You remember when Sony made the deal and they spent a billion dollars on retaining employees? Like just a billion, one yeah. billion dollars of that deal was specifically earmarked to retain Bungie employees. And right, yeah, God, what happened here? Because it, it seems, dude, what in the world? A billion dollars? Okay, somebody's making way more money there. Like somebody is getting way overpaid. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes sense. Somebody audited this shit. What the? Fuck? Seems like Bungie was such a important crown jewel. Like I said, they spent billions of dollars on that studio. Um, and it was supposed to be so much more than just destiny and it seemed like everything was going well. And then, man, we are at this absolute feels like rock bottom moment for this company that has been through so many weird times. First, you know, being the Halo team, then leaving Microsoft so they can do their own thing then getting swept up with Activision, getting their freedom to then make this deal with Sony that seemed like incredible and highly lucrative. So they made money from that deal. And now here they are again. Yeah. Do you think Bungie's been playing this game going on decades now? They've been playing this game of cat and mouse, you know, the, or the shaking, shake, just shaking just enough ass. You know, they, they got in bed with Microsoft and they got out, you know, they got in bed with Activision. Then they got out and they got in bed with Sony. You think Sony just legally box the men more than no maybe not i think i think i think this may have been the deal that bungie intentionally made or at least the higher ups that bungie intentionally made as far as i know as, as far as i know the only way bungie was going to remain autonomous is is if they would have kept a certain profit margin whatever that was supposed to be i i, I don't have that information i imagine that's why there was so much uh scrutiny on them from Sony, right? That was yep. a very expensive deal. And I had to think that they think they overpaid immensely. Yeah. I mean, clearly a lot of that was based on inflated promises and a lot of these things just kind of working out and being the best case scenario. Um, to recap for people just, just tuning in, uh, the, for the, the future outlook of Bungie, the people at Bungie and Destiny, the, 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 you know, the best case scenario is Frontiers, this new version of Destiny 2 that's going to have two experience packs per year that are smaller and don't have a lot of the content you're used to. If that works out and then Marathon also sells very well, they will then revisit the future of Destiny at that point. Maybe do a Destiny 3 may, or maybe do something similar to what this payback thing was going to be. Again, this new Destiny experience. Um, and then if one of those ifs falls out, if one of them misses, or you know, will all of them miss possibly, De the bunchy is in a much worse situation. They are in a dire, dire straits at that point, and who knows what that looks like? I, I don't. So yes, it's uh, it kind of feels like rock bottom. Well, I mean, if if that happens, then they just that's it. So, uh, Sony absorbs Bungie completely. If that's not already happening.
the question is, is what does Sony do after that? Does Sony just keep Marathon and Destiny 2 on life support? Do they take the risk of making a D3? Bottom for this game, the, the, the community, and obviously the people who were all just laid off for, for working on this game and really kind of killing themselves to get out in a, a, a big swan song for a game that people have been playing for 10 years. And it is the thing that they wanted. They did do the thing everyone said, please just do this, make the game, give it the, the send off it deserves. They did. And here we are. It is just kind of yeah. flabbergasting. Again, like it's like this is the send off. And it's like, what's the plan after that? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like yep. now I'm curious what, and again, we don't know. Like what was it about payload or payback? Excuse me, that. Why was that shelf then? Because there should have been something ready to go if we were nearing the end of Destiny 2. Like, how how rough was that looking? Like, uh, I don't know. It's distressing. I, and now I'm like, why are so many, why are some of these projects that almost seem like necessary? And I get sometimes things don't work out, but it makes me think about um, the Last of Us factions, right? Like, oh, we canceled that. Like, well, some form of that maybe should have come it out. Maybe should have, but, but I, I, I bet there was a part of like when Bungie was like, came, there's, the story is Bungie came and looked at that thing was like, you can't, you can't do this. You, this is, you're not gonna be able to support this. I bet there was like, you know, almost PTSD of like looking at it and be like, in two years, the amount of money it's gonna cost to maintain this thing and continue making new content for a team like Naughty Dog, it's gonna be so astronomical. And you wanna know how we know? we're living that right now yeah it's so i i kind of see that that's almost certainly damn. and that's the story i've heard from that as well damn it's great dude. to identify problems right uh, -huh. uh but, but boy we're gonna, we need some solutions here soon everybody yeah everybody everybody knows that the destiny player loves when they take away content from them that's uh yeah that's the primary so I, yeah, I mean, that's why, that's right, that's why these ifs are like so, so strong, because we know that the being able to thread the needle of putting out the to switching to these experience packs from expansion packs and kind of saying, hey, pay us for these things that are not what you're ex used to getting. They're not going to be able to pull that off with this audience. I mean, you know, I know there's a lot of Destiny people uh, watching, you know you guys know how you are like come on let's be real here <laughs> what if expansion packs god damn dude these fucking names are just terrible i mean at least rebrand it call it something different what if what if what if they're great what what if, what if, what, if, what if they were menagerie black armory scope here's here's what i would want i would want them to be 40 dollars a piece and i would want each of the expansion packs to be of witch queen caliber or higher which i know you probably think across it's like literally almost at the peak yes i know what i just said i want two witch queen expansions to drop per year delusional am i chat am i delusional how so two savage dicks twice a year we'll see 40 dollars a piece that's cheaper than the annual expansion that would be crazy crunch on the developers not if you don't have to have a story which would suck Obviously, I don't want to get rid of the story, but obviously, you know, here they're saying that, that there's not going to be much of a narrative, you know, uh, I mean, it's going to be rough. It, it, it's rough for any MMO. Yeah. Like, two, like only having two major content releases a year. It's just not, it's just, uh, it's just not a lot. It's just not a lot to keep people engaged constantly. We'll see. Yep. Big Fresh 37 here says, obviously, the Bungie employees are the real victims here, but it sure does suck that I feel like after eight years, I got to find a new home game. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of what I, I mentioned before. There's not just a lot of things that are exactly like Destiny 2. Sadly, Anthem did not work out, right? And, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that scared a lot of people off the genre. And then, like, there's things that, like, were make half-hearted attempts at it, like Avengers and Suicide Squad, and we saw how that worked out, too. I mean, this whole genre is going to be in a rough slot. The hot new thing is uh, the first descendant. Like I see a lot of Destiny players sure. moving to that game, but I don't know how it's, how much it's gonna last. That yeah, when I um, I think I was just talking about the first descendant in a meeting uh, earlier this week, or this could have been on content. I can't remember, but um, I was checking Steam database, and it has still a hundred thousand like uh, active users, monthly daily active users, or concurrence on Steam or something like that. Uh, but you could see also the last like 30 days and all the games around it are like maintaining like the same number of players each day. And the first ascendant obviously still early on and it's going to probably be losing players, but it is. It's like kind of quickly declining. So I wonder if it's going to be able to keep people around. Obviously, that's an open question. Um, yeah, yeah. It, 
that game is very grindy so eventually the people that get tired of the grinding is gonna leave and the only people that's gonna get stay there is like the the crazy ones right they wanna like play for hours and hours to get like one character so uh, yeah i don't know i have a feeling a lot of the uh uh schluters of the future will be uh from korea yeah yeah, stuff like I mean, just that, that region where it's like they maybe they can make these things kind of look look slick and and polished in a lot of ways, um, but that like are open to the grind, like with, appealing to an audience that is accepting of the grind. Yeah, um, accepting the grind and of you know free to play online store stuff. Yep, yeah, exactly. A lot of that. Go ahead. Zoomer says this week in gaming news: if you understand money but not video games, you will be bad at making money through video games. Jim Ryan and Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it definitely seems that way. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Jim Jim Ryan is uh, responsible for a lot of the positions that Sony is in right now, but um, I don't necessarily know if I would lay much of the blame for what is happening happening at Bungie at Jim Ryan's feet. But uh, that doesn't mean, yeah, Sony still has a lot of problems in front of them because of the Jim Ryan decisions. Still Jim Ryan's number one fan and defender, huh? Yeah, yeah he's a beautiful man. All right, I don't think we got anything else on this. For now, though, at least until Jason Schreier comes out with his article. Um, here's the thing, man. Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy are no longer at Bungie. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe it was, um, you know, maybe, you know, obviously it's because of payback being being shut down. But perhaps Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy didn't want to continue working on just Destiny. Um, they want to work on the next big project, as was pointed out by Jeff. And um, it, it's unfortunate, but I think... <laughs> I think reality is kind of staring us all in the face and we'll get more confirmation from Jason's article today. Um, but I think that reality is that D3 is not something that's being made. And I know we just had a video about that yesterday, but whatever spinoff that payback was going to be, that's dead in the water. A D3 is, is nowhere near in development. And it seems like everything is going to come down to Marathon. Bungie, needs, Bungie and Sony want to see how Marathon does. I don't know. I think it's foolish. I think that you have a winning horse that being Destiny right now. And I think Destiny is worth your investment. I think D3, one of those incubation projects should have been D3 that started years ago. And um, you could have still shipped out Marathon. You did Marathon 2025 and at D3 2026 or even 2027. But that's not how things worked out. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.